The metrics right here. That's my metrics. That's all I can do. I can listen to 35 people. At the end, I've got to make a decision. But I'm going to surround myself with the greatest minds, uh, not only the greatest minds, but the greatest minds in numerous different businesses, including the business of politics and reason. I'm going to have to make a decision, and I only hope to God that it's the right decision. But I would say without question, it's the biggest decision I've ever had to make. President Trump answering a question from uh, Jeff Mason at the White House uh, task force briefing today about when to reopen the U.S. economy. Uh, this as uh, the doctors there as a part of the task force say they are reaching the peak, not quite there, but New York sharing some data today that hospital beds and the need for them is down significantly. You can see the graph. Uh, they did see uh, 777 New Yorkers die today alone, but the numbers are going going in the right direction, according to the governor today. Let's bring in our panel. Jason Riley, Wall Street Journal columnist and senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute. Leslie Marshall, Democratic strategist, and the aforementioned Jeff Mason, White House correspondent for Reuters. Um, Jeff, that was another marathon uh, task force briefing today, uh, several rounds of questions. Yours really get to the heart of what everybody is asking is, when is the moment that the, the country will open back up for business? And your thoughts on the president's answer and and what uh, Fauci and Burke said as well. Well, I, I think that is the heart of the question that we're all asking. And I think it, there's a lot of tension about that. I mean, and not and I don't mean necessarily fighting, although there might be some of that as well, but just a genuine tension. You could see that in the president's face and you could hear it in his answer that, you know, he's he sees this as the biggest decision he's ever had to make. Uh, obviously, he has made very clear he wants to get the economy open soon. Uh, but the, the counter arguments to that are clear. And, and that's why he ended up extending the federal guidelines on social distancing until the end of this month. So, you know, I think he, he did. He has tried to make clear that he will listen to his advisors, including the health advisors. But his instinct seems to be uh, that he would really like to open it soon. We'll see if he's able to do that. Jason, he said he's going to have this council. It's essentially a second task force, but calling a, a reopening the economy council that he'll talk about on Tuesday. Your thoughts on that decision that he calls the, the biggest of his life? Well, I, I think it is going to be the biggest decision of his life. Um, and I think right now is the time to be preparing for it. This is going to happen on a rolling basis. You're going to see, just like we saw infections peak around the country on a rolling basis, we'll see them come down from that peak on a rolling basis. So in places like New York, where things do seem to be peaking, this is the time to start thinking about it. I do think um, the states are going to play a pretty big role in this, and they're going to have to make decisions on the ground, state by state, region by region around the country. But they are going to be looking for some guidance from the White House in terms of what, what metrics they should be using, infection rates, uh, hospitalization rates, mortality rates, you know, when, what should trigger us doing what? Opening up which sectors? What time? When can, can people go back to work and so forth? So the, the, the White House is going to play an important role here in terms of providing some much needed guidance for, uh, for the various states around the country. Leslie, uh, the president spent some time saying that he thinks the governors are happy with what they're getting help wise from the federal government. Obviously, the, that dynamic has changed in in days and weeks as we've been dealing with this and different places have a shortage of PPE. And uh, and obviously, the ventilators are not needed as much as they once were. Your sense of of that governor federal government relationship? I mean, when you have governors like the state I'm in, California, Gavin Newsom, or uh, Cuomo in, in New York, who are, you know, liberal, uh, Democratic, blue uh, state governors who are uh, applauding the president and applauding the administration, uh, definitely we can see that we are now uh, finally, in a sense, headed in the right direction. But there are some areas, uh, you know, look at the state of Baltimore that say, help, we need more. And we see states helping each other. Here in California, we have more ventilators right now in certain sections than we need, and we are going to be sending them to other states. And I think that's when it's not just the state's individual, but that we are a nation collectively, and that, you know, th this is something that we have 
get through together uh, politicians, medical people, and, and lay people uh, in order to put this behind us and be a page in our history books. All right, I want to play one more sound by the Surgeon General uh, with his recommendations, uh, specifically for African American communities that are disproportionately being affected by coronavirus. Take a listen. Avoid alcohol, tobacco, and drugs. And call your friends and family, check in on your mother. She wants to hear from you right now. And speaking of mothers, we need you to do this, if not for yourself, then for your abuela. Do it for your granddaddy. Do it for your big mama. Do it for your pop pop. We need you to understand, especially in communities of color, we need you to step up and stop the spread so that we can protect those who are most vulnerable. Could you, I guess, have a response for people who might be offended by the language that you used? That was not meant to be offensive. I use the language that is used in my family. Jason, the Surgeon General seems to be a pretty earnest guy. What you, would you make of that exchange? Yeah, I do think he's a he's a pretty earnest guy, but it's also an example of the the types of uh, uh, belligerent questions that the administration officials from the president on down are getting from the press. I think he was trying to make a very practical, a very commonsensical argument, and that's that's the response that he's he's getting from the media. So um, that's what the administration has been up against uh, in, in in dealing with this situation. All right, much more to talk about on this. But next up, the Friday lightning round. We are actually getting to do one. And Vice President Candidate Casino. Joe Biden is essentially the Democratic nominee in waiting. This is a new Fox poll, has a new head-to-head -head number out this week uh, showing Joe Biden and Donald Trump tied in this poll. Uh, you can see the shift from March uh, till now. Uh, this as Joe Biden gets ready to head towards what will be a convention, and he'll obviously have to pick a vice, president, a vice presidential nominee. With that, let's head down to Candidate Casino vice presidential nominee. Casino. A different casino. $100 in chips. You have to bet, and you have to say who Joe Biden will pick. Start with you, Leslie. $100. 30 bucks on uh, Senator Kamala Harris, $30 on the governor of the great state of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer, and 40 bucks on Stacey Abrams as of now. Okay, uh, Jason, who you got? Uh, I think uh, Klobuchar uh, would be the smartest pick. I think Harris and Abrams are there if he wants a progressive. And I know what he said about picking a female running mate, Brett, but I still think that Andrew Cuomo is in the mix. He's become the superstar uh, politician in America over the past few weeks, and, and Biden would be crazy at least to not consider tapping into that. All right, Jeff Mason. All right, Brett. First, really quickly, I just wanted to say to Jason's comment earlier, I didn't think that that question for the Surgeon General was belligerent at all. But uh, back to vice presidential uh, casino, I've sort of split my hand and not being a huge betting man between uh, Klobuchar, <laughs> Harris, uh, Whitmer and and Warren. OK, not a, not a lot of out on a limb there. Um, no, let's go with winners <laughs> and losers. Uh, Jeff, start with you, winner and loser. All right. Well, the winner is easy for me. I just think uh, another shout out to the medical uh, staff and grocery clerks and everyone who's been social distancing as well. Uh, it's just can't we can't take our hats off enough to those to those people. Uh, for losers, I chose Thomas Modley, the former acting uh, secretary of the Navy for uh, the controversy with with relation to the Roosevelt and his comments to the to the sailors there. All right, Leslie, winner and loser. The winner is all of the moms and dads that are at home with their kids that have become teachers and that are homeschooling them, including myself, a new thing for our resume. Uh, my loser, all of the governors currently that are still not having a shelter in place order, uh, the faster we do that, it would seem the data shows the quicker, the quicker we'll flatten that curve, which we need to do. Okay, Jason, winner and loser. My winner is the Federal Reserve uh, for their efforts to continue to make loans available to businesses big and small so that they can stay afloat, uh, limit the number of layoffs, and then, and then hire people when things do turn around. I think that's going to be much more important than the government sending out these checks. Um, my miss or my loser is Bernie Sanders. Um, uh, the revolution is not coming. And I think all that he's really done is make it more difficult for Democrats uh, to do well in November with Biden at the top of the ticket since he continues to pull Biden 
to the left, which is not only where the Democratic Party is not right now, but where the country is not. All right, panel, thank you so much. Uh, I have two winners. One is obviously the medical staff and personnel working every day on the front lines, and we can't say enough about it. I agree with you 100% there, Jeff. I have a winner, though, the special report staff every night and all of the technical folks putting together a show that for the first time in a long time is on the air tonight, and it's complete. So a winner there, double winners. Panel, thank you very much.